Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. Let's hear it for the veterans. The Biff is back. Haley Deegan wins out west. Just racing or dirty driving? And does anyone else feel like the Canadian Grand Prix ended like the 2002 Indy 500? We've got all this and more coming up. Welcome to Speedway Report for Monday, June the 10th, 2019, from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. I'm Patrick Reynolds, and thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. Good to see everybody again. It's been a little while. Had a bit of a hiatus since our last live show, even a tape show. We'll get into that and touch talk on my travels and where I've been. We'll talk about that during the program. Right now, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup race is concluding at the Michigan International Speedway. It rained yesterday, postponed it to today. Fox Sports 1 had a broadcast commitment already in the afternoon. They moved the green flag to 5 p.m. Eastern time. It is playing out with roughly 80 miles to go. Joey Logano is your leader. It just checked before we went live on air. It is a dandy finish. Don't go away from us. But if you have it simulcast, two different screens, people do it all the time on laptops and phones and televisions. I know you're watching us while you watch the end of the Michigan race. Pretty good race so far. Logano, your leader. On Saturday, the Xfinity cars did get in their 250 miler. Tyler Reddick won on a fuel mileage, gambled, rolled the dice, came up sevens. He finds his way to victory lane. On Friday night in Fort Worth, Texas, Greg Biffle, Hopped in a Kyle Busch Toyota. It had been planned for a while. Biffle practiced the truck here in May uh, in Charlotte during race weeks here. Had been away from the track in a, well, in a driver's role for about three years. One win, one start. Nice. Winds up in victory lane. I'd like to talk a little bit more about the Biff later on, too. Rolling through the uh, Speedway Report victory lane lap. k and Pro Series West cars were at Colorado National Speedway over the weekend. Haley Deegan, your winner. More to talk about there as well. Indy cars raced Saturday night at Texas. Joseph Newgarden takes another win for Team Penske. Formula One yesterday up in Canada. Lewis Hamilton's Mercedes wound up in victory lane. More to the story than just that. And the IMSA cars, not running here, but taking a break for the 24 hours of Le Mans. I love that they give these guys a break and uh, allow them to stretch their legs, drivers, crew members, cars, entries, uh, to run well at Le Mans over in France while they don't hold them here to the United States. <clears throat> NHRA Straightliners were in Topeka, Kansas this weekend in top fuel. What a run. Steve Torrance claims his fifth straight top fuel win. He closed last year with six straight. Said, how in the world would anyone ever match that, top that, do it again? Probably won't. He's on the verge of it now with five straight in the middle of 2019. Bristol, Tennessee, Thunder Valley coming up for the NHRA this weekend. Can Torrance make it? Six straight wins. Speaking of numbers, in Funny Car, Robert Height. He got career win in Funny Car, number 49. What does that do? It ties height with Don the Snake Prudhomme, all-time victory list in Funny Car for NHRA. On the dirt, the World of Outlaw Sprints were in the great northern part of the country. On Friday night in Grand Forks, North Dakota, Logan Schuhart won the A-Main, and on Saturday night in Sauk Rapids, Minnesota, Brad Sweet took the checkered flag. Arca cars were also on the high banks at Michigan last Friday. Michael Self led a lot of the race, about 90 laps, I think, a total of the 100. But he still needed a last lap pass to get the win. Self uh, rolls into victory lane. The, the USAC sprints have not raced this past weekend, but they're on their way to the northeast. The Eastern Storm for the USAC cars commences tomorrow night at Grandview Speedway in Pennsylvania. If you're watching us live or if you're watching us taped, Tuesday, June 11th, on the Hill, the USAC Sprints will be at Grandview and touring the northeastern United States. USAC Midgets last week wrapped up Indiana Midget Week. The week-long champ was Logan Seavey. 
Speaking of Grandview, Pennsylvania, I was there a couple Saturdays ago. Saw some great racing. Saw all the qualifying get in as well as a Legends feature. But the Sportsman and Modified uh, main events were rained out. Small Block Modified feature this past Saturday was won by Jeff Strunk. The Sportsman ran double shows to make up for the rain out. I just told you about Brian Herthler and Derek Smith split the Sportsman feature races at Grandview. The Cars Tour, not far from us, was up in Langley, Virginia for pavement late model stock cars. Deke McCaskill won the 125 lap main event. And as usual, the Bowman Gray Stadium in Winston-Salem, North Carolina got rained out. I believe Mother Nature is well on her way to becoming track champion at Bowman Gray Stadium. They have been hurting to try to get as many races in there. Seriously, they have more rainouts than they have, have race uh, race nights gotten in on the calendar in 2019. And the $100,000 to win dream was held this past weekend at the Eldora Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio. Brandon Shepard took a narrow, exciting win over Dale McDowell, uh, take the hundred grand. In spite of the race win, in spite of the finish, which was they were side by side, and Shepard beat McDowell by a nose. Great finish, great racing, great. The big stat for the night: Rocket Chassis. This was their first Crown Jewel event ever at Eldora. Seriously, Rocket Chassis has never won one of those Crown Jewel races, either the World 100 or the Dream. First win for those guys. Uh, so yeah, Brandon Shepard pilots a rocket into victory lane. First one. Would you have guessed that before I told you that? I wouldn't have. I'm glad you were all sitting down when I told you that. So as I said a few moments ago, welcome back, everybody, but not really to you, more to me. Welcome back to me. Where the heck have I been? Kind of like, where's Waldo? Sorry, I was, wasn't in the public eye. I was, wasn't purposely hiding either, but travels, business and work travels had taken me on the road. I had been to, uh, what was it, whatever it was, two weeks ago, I headed out to Indianapolis for the Indy 500, which if you want to recap any of the stories of the weekend there, they are on our site, speedwayreport.com. Click on there and then just cruise around to the stories. Uh, I also did some sales work for CC Racer Magazine and Speedway Illustrated Magazine. You know, racing doesn't happen without sponsors and advertisers, so I was knocking on some doors up there for those publications. Had a visit with Team Penske, and Roger Penske gave away a book at the Speedway to all the media in attendance at his lunch of 50 years or 50th year anniversary since he first entered the Indy 500. His first en entry, 1969, with the late, great Mark Donahue at the wheel. Fantastic book was presented to us, which this hardcover, big, smashing coffee table book uh, the captain presented all the media that came to lunch that day. Color pictures of oh, so many hundreds of pages of pictures chronicling his efforts at the, at the Brickyard over the years. Fantastic piece. Uh, the later that night, it was a great, great evening. I intended the Auto Racing Hall of Fame dinner. I talked to you guys about this every single year. Inducted this year were Dan Weldon and Bob Jenkins. What an honor it was to be present and be in the company of watching uh, watching this event happen. Weldon's widow, as well as his children, were in attendance. It was fantastic to see. And I got to say hello and meet one of the heroes of mine, the late, or not late, by any means, but the great Bob Jenkins, who I first started watching in the early 1980s on ESPN when I first got cable television. And he and Larry Newber called the action of NASCAR on ESPN. Then I started watching him on all auto racing, uh, IndyCar racing, sports car racing, short track racing. He was fantastic, and he still influences me today. Uh, it was great to shake hands with him. I told him the story how I used to watch Scrambled Cable down at my grandmother's house. She had cable TV, but not – it was scrambled – but you can hear the audio okay, so you're thinking most 13, 14-year-old guys are watching Scrambled Cable. What are they actually watching? Well, I was watching Winston Cup at North Wilkesboro. That's what I was watching, and literally more or less listening to the race, as I didn't have MRN as I grew up in Connecticut either. But I would listen to Bob Jenkins and Larry Newber on Scrambled Cable just so I could you know, participate in the race and listen to the coverage. He uh, they he got a kick out of the story that I was that big of an auto racing nerd. But, yeah, I got, I got to uh, be there 
as Bob Jenkins and Dan Weldon were in, inducted into the Auto Racing Hall of Fame in Indianapolis. And then during that weekend, went to Carb Day, the usual thrilling Freedom 100 finish, saw final practice for the Indy 500, the pit stop competition, uh, was at the Indy 500, and it just had a wonderful weekend. Now, we had the Indy 500, it was great. We had a 90% chance of thunderstorms on race day, so we all made, we're not literally making plans for a Monday race, but it certainly was looking that way on Saturday, and we had to kind of feel your way along, and uh, we wound up standing on the grid on the Indy 500 looking up, and there was, we were getting sunburned. You know, it was so hot and so sunny there, uh, but boy, they missed the forecast big time and was there for Simon Pagino's big win in the 500. From Indianapolis, I came back to Charlotte, was here for a day, then boom, went up to Pennsylvania on another road trip there. Also, working for Speedway Illustrated and CC Racer Magazines. Hit up their websites if you want. Uh, I think they give you a free issue. and There's subscription info there, so check out Speedway Illustrated and CC Racer. Went up there, uh, did some dirt racing, rained a lot. Didn't get all the races in that we hoped to get. But I did pay my first visit to Linda's Speedway. Saw some CC racers there. It was kind of cool to uh, check out my second ever CC style race. Then went over to Grandview Speedway, as I told you a few moments ago. Saw the qualifying events. Big thanks to Vicky at Grandview Speedway and Ernie Saxton as well for the courtesy of uh, allowing Speedway Illustrated and CC Racer into the pit area. Uh, could not have been more professional and courteous to us. Very kind. It was disappointing that uh, Mother Nature claimed the modified and sportsman features, but the racing at the hill was fantastic as usual. Great racing at Grandview. I love that track. I'm not going to make it for the USAC Sprint Race on Tuesday, June 11th. That's tomorrow if you're watching us live. But if you are in the neighborhood, do yourself a favor and get up to Grandview Speedway. Watch that USAC race or any race uh, and any Saturday night there with the Modifieds. Fan oh, great track, great racing. I love that place. I uh, also got to Circus City Speedway in Indianapolis. Kind of stick up, skipped over that up in Peru, Indiana. Um, skipped over that in the Indianapolis recap. But got to see that was my very first CC class race a non-winged world championship they had three nights of four nights of racing excuse me over 100 cars going for the 10,000 to win a main on saturday night the finale uh, great indoctrination into cc racing had a lot of fun in indiana had a lot of fun in pennsylvania but it took me away from the studio here i've packed this studio up before actually on a road trip i've done it before my mom's house in connecticut one time several years ago um, yeah, I watched the video of it. You couldn't tell where I was. Right now, I'm real close to Charlotte, North Carolina, as usual, right around Lake Norman. But yeah, we can take the show on the road. But the effort and work that we put into it was just so much and so hard. I decided, I mean, I'll, I'll say it, it was easier to just take the weeks off. And here we are, we're back. We anticipate being on the air with you guys again for a long time. So thank you for joining us again, and it's good to be back with you guys. You guys didn't go anywhere. It's not welcome back to you. I'm back as I went through the travels of dirt racing in Pennsylvania and uh, fantastic uh, Indianapolis area as well. So to get to the current race, and what do we just see over the weekend? Uh, I'm going to start with Se Sebastian Vettel and his penalty in the Canadian Grand Prix. We told you earlier, Lewis Hamilton was the winner. Let's recap what happened here. Sebastian Vettel was leading the race in a very quick S section of the track, turn three and turn four. He went through turn three, slid off the track, which is a grassy runoff. You run back on the track in turn four, and Hamilton almost made contact, and it all happened so fast. It was, oh gosh, how do I describe it? A crock. I think it was a crock. Vettel was assessed a five-second penalty at the end of the race. They just assessed him a five-second penalty, so as long as Hamilton stayed within five seconds, he won the race. Vettel crossed the checkered flag about a second and a half, roughly, ahead of Hamilton, but it was not 
Oh my God, I'm pulling I'm pulling up the website here from Formula One. I, I can't believe this call was actually made. Uh, this is from F1's website, FormulaOne.com. Fact, car five, which was Vettel, left the track, rejoined unsafely, and forced another car off the track. Uh, involved in an accident as defined by Article 38.1 of the FIA Formula One Sporting regulations with a five second time penalty to Sebastian Vettel. The reason, the reason the stewards reviewed video evidence and determined that car five left the track at turn three, rejoined the track in turn four in an unsafe manner and forced car 44 off the track. Car 44 had to take evasive action to avoid a collision. And naturally Ferrari is going to appeal. Well, they should. That was a that was the biggest crock call I had seen in a long time. FIA, I hope you're watching. I know my show's kind of small, but that was lame. That was a that was a BS call by the officials. Vettel didn't do anything unsafe. He slid off the track. Auto racing is a slide off the track. Vettel didn't take aim, slide through the grass to slide in front back in front of Hamilton to try to get Hamilton to wreck. The road veered towards the left. Sebastian cut the corner, went back on the track. There he was with grass-covered tires, as Vettel said over the radio. Uh, FIA was a crock. I asked about this. One buddy one uh, commented on Facebook on the Speedway Report page that Vettel is paid to not make mistakes. Yeah, you're right. Vettel did make a mistake, but the punishment certainly did not fit the crime. Rejoining the track in an unsafe manner. Watch the film. Watch the video if you didn't watch the race. Oh, boy. Travesty. Injustice. Vettel was robbed. Vettel was robbed. FIA, you suck. Bad, horrible missed call. Horrible. Horrible. Did I say horrible? Horrible call from Formula One. Uh, what the, yeah, what, what, the, what the what on that deal? Are you kidding me? You make that call? Somebody, you know, does it wonder if somebody in FIA is on the take from Mercedes? I'll say it. That was an awful, awful, awful call. Couldn't stand it. It's terrible. Stop with the Formula One bashing. I'll stop there. Let's get to the good stuff. Greg Biffle. What a great return for him. Winds up in victory lane Friday night at Fort Worth, Texas in uh, Kyle Busch's truck. Biffle, I talked to him several years ago around here in Mooresville, just in a casual conversation. And he'd driven for Roush his whole tenure, truck, bush cars, and then finally cup. And he was about done with his three-year contract with Roush. And he said, I'll probably sign my next three-year deal with Roush, which he did. He goes, that's probably be the last one I sign as that was putting him into his late 40s. And in the last several years at Roush, he wasn't as competitive as he wanted to be, so he didn't renew with Roush. Looked at the racing series. He could have gone to Cup in another capacity, in, in another ride, but he didn't want to get involved in anything that was not competitive. He wasn't going to bother if he couldn't win. Possibly could we see a return of Biffle to the truck series? I sure hope so. We used to see these guys. You know, Remember Mike Skinner, Ron Hornaday went up to from trucks up to cup wound up going back to trucks where they were competitive winners and champions in the right ride. I'd love to see the young guys that are learning, but I'd love to see a home for the older fellows. Where's Ted Musgrave? Where's Todd Bodine? That series was great when the guys, uh, it provided another home, another platform for guys that either aged out of cup or were shown the door because a younger kid with money was behind them. But they didn't just disappear. They were still on track, and uh, we watched them race in the cup or in the truck series. I thought it was a nice addition to the series. Could Biffle be added back? Gosh, I hope so. I know he doesn't need the money, and he doesn't have to do it, but it would add a whole lot to that truck series if Greg Biffle came back on a full-time basis. Great boost in the arm for the trucks if if it were to happen. One uh, question for you, or a couple questions for you. Tonight, Haley Deegan, what did you think of her win at Colorado over the weekend? Is this the way of the world? 
She just shoved uh, the leader, Derek Krause, out of the way. Did she have the line? She didn't have any remorse after the event. That We've talked about this ad nauseum on this show. I'm not a fan of the bump and run or the dump and run for any kind. I think, you, you know, you, you get to second, you got to work and pass the leader. And some of these young kids, they don't, they don't work on the cars. So the front bumper is not their last option. It's the first option. And when you come down to the last lap, they just send it in. And if there's contact or whatever, they, they don't really care or worry about it. As long as they win, that's what matters. And I think how you win is just as important. Now, Haley Deegan is a good driver, and certainly the female, a competitive female aspect, uh, would be welcomed by NASCAR in the upper levels now because we've already had the female aspect there several times. The novelty is no longer there. You need a competitive female, not just a female. I welcome females. There's a lot of competitive ones out there, but let's get one to cup. Uh, but I, I can't be bashing Haley when I see guys doing the same thing. I'll bash all of you because I don't think that's any way to race where the front bumper is the first option. I'm not a fan of that. Never have been, never will be. Dump and run and bump and run, same thing to me. Doesn't matter. Let's get out and pass people but it seems to be a lost art as each generation goes by and up to NASCAR. Um, I watched the IndyCar race Saturday night at Texas. Almost made it to the end. A buddy of mine uh, works on Team Penske, and I saw him Sunday, and he wound up in victory lane, and I actually missed it. I felt bad that I did not stay awake for uh, the entire IndyCar race. But I thought it was a good race. I thought it was competitive. But I had trouble with – guys couldn't complete a pass. They could close up on the guy in front of them, pull out, and then they would stall out. A lot of the aerodynamics were there. Uh, we see this – the aero push is the equivalent in the NASCAR stock car world. The mile-and-a-half, two-mile racing in IndyCar, to me, is breathtaking and extremely exciting. But it was difficult to pass. Guys could get up, run with each other's – clearing a car was tough. So – I don't know. Did that uh, aero package from a few years ago I thought was a little better at the Brickyard. It was a little better at the Downforce tracks, too. Where's the happy medium? Because I don't want things to get too dangerous. But, man, that mile-and-a-half racing at Texas, breathtaking in the IndyCar world. Some think people think I'm in the minority. I know that. I love it. I think it's a great addition to the series. And a tip of the hat before we get out of here tonight to Motor Week Illustrated, that uh, – was the foundation and the inspiration for this show to begin with. Going to call our racer of the week. Had several good candidates, including Sebastian Vettel. He didn't win, but he drove his heart out. Uh, Brandon Shepard, winner of that World 100. I'm going to give it to the veteran, the Biff, Greg Biffle. Being out of the cockpit for three years, steps back into the truck and finds his way to victory lane down at Texas Motor Speedway. Greg Biffle is the Speedway Report racer of the week everybody in between our broadcast keep up with the world of auto racing with speedwayreport.com this show and all of our past ones are uploaded on the site we also have racing articles to read you want to catch up on what i saw at indianapolis from the track it's all there speedwayreport.com you can also connect to us on facebook at the speedway report with patrick reynolds page uh the racers reunion facebook page on Twitter at Speedway Report, and I'm at Speedway Pat, also on Twitter and Instagram. And in the forum on racersreunion.com, you can also connect with Speedway Report. Also, LinkedIn and our YouTube channels. Basically, if you're online, you can find Speedway Report. We're all over the <laughs> we're all over the place. Big thanks to everyone on the Facebook live feed for joining the conversation during the show tonight. Thank you for welcoming me back. It's good to be here. Thank you guys for spending your Monday evening with us live. It's good to see everybody. Go to a racetrack near you. Tracks are running when the rain cooperates. Grassroots, ovals, drag strips, and road courses are the backbone and foundation of the auto racing world. So take in a race at your local track this weekend. I want to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here on a Monday night. Freedom is not free, and a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report, take care of yourselves and come home soon. 
A special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds. You can follow me on Twitter at Speedway Pat. Now on Facebook, stay with Facebook because head on over to the Drag Racing List page. Right coming up next at the top of the hour in about four minutes, less than is racing and rocking with draglist.com. Bill, John, and Barb will have some great drag racing talk. And we will be back live here on Facebook in one week, Monday, June the 17th. We will look at the NHRA from Thunder Valley, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, NASCAR Xfinity from Iowa, and a whole bunch of short track racing. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all next week.